Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I hope you're all really well. So today's video is going to be another sew along video and today I'm going to be sewing up the toaster sweater by Sew House 7. So you may remember if you've watched my videos from long ago back in January that the toaster sweater pattern was actually on my make nine for this year. I've not done a make nine before. This is the first year I've ever done a make nine. Um, it's not going too well. <laughs> and I did wonder if that would be the case because I get very distracted and I'm not very good at sticking to plans that I've made back in January because so many new things come up in the year that I want to try. But I thought this year I'd give it a go. Um, and yeah, the toaster sweater a pattern this one here was on my make nine and I think I brought this pattern back in January actually and I've not yet made it up for some reason it's sat in my pattern um, stash and I've just not got around to making it up so I recently bought some really lovely knit fabric from Minerva which I thought might match quite well to this pattern um, so yeah I thought I would sew this up and see how I get on so yes, the toaster sweater. So you've probably seen this pattern around. I've seen loads of lovely versions over on Instagram. Um, I have to say that if I hadn't seen lots of versions on Instagram, I wouldn't necessarily have gone for this pattern. I don't find the pattern image particularly inspiring. Um, maybe that's just me. Um, I think it's a really lovely sweater pattern. I really like the shape of it. Um, there are two versions that you can sew up. So you can sew this one here, which has like a high, kind of funnel neck or a mock neck, I think that's called, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, or you can do this one, which is um, more of a kind of, um, uh, 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 what do you call that? I don't know, <laughs> a bit of a higher neck, but not quite so high. And then that's more of an A-line sweater with some slits at the side. Um, so both versions are actually really nice and I think they'll make lovely tops to sew up for autumn and winter time. So I'm gonna be sewing version one today and the description for version one is a high neck, loose mock tee, raglan sleeved cropped sweater with a wide waistband and wide cuffs. Um, and yeah, as I say, I just really like the look of that one. I thought it'd be really cozy for autumn and winter. So recently um, I bought some lovely fabric from Minerva in one of their craft club day sales and I mentioned this on a recent fabric haul so you may have heard me talking about it. It's really lovely, it's by Meat Milk and it's called a soft lima knit. Um, I've never bought or worked with anything like this before but I really love the colour of it. It's almost like it's been knitted, it's like um, knitwear. It's not necessarily your traditional um, sweatshirt fabric. I'll hold it up to the camera and just hope that it focuses a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it's a really lovely camel colour. It's actually described as sand on their website. And I'll link this fabric down below if you want to go over and have a look at it for yourself. So you might have noticed that I'm just holding a scrap of this fabric up here and that's because I'm filming this video completely back to front and I've already cut out all the fabric. So while I'm talking, I'm just gonna insert a bit of footage of me cutting out and you'll have to excuse the quality and the lighting in this because I did just quickly film it on my phone. I cut this out um, quite late at night once my children had gone to bed. Um, it was really late and really dark and I just quickly um, filmed it on my phone. So I'm just gonna put it in here while I'm talking because I know that people do like to see the cutting out process as well. So after a bit of umming and ahhing and wondering whether I needed to trace out this pattern or whether to just cut into it directly, I did decide to be a good girl and trace out my pattern just in case I needed to make any alterations. I actually went for the size XS. I'm a bust 32 inches and that's what I went on because the sweatshirt is quite cropped. Um, and the bust sizes for the size XS is actually a 31 to 32 and because this sweater is quite fitted I was a little bit concerned that it might end up a bit too fitted for my liking um, so yeah I did decide to trace out in the end um, but I did actually have a quick look at the finished garment measurements which obviously you should always do and the finished measurement for the bust was actually 37 inches, which gives you quite a lot of ease around the bust. So I thought I'd probably be fine with the size excess, but just to be on the safe side and just in case I ever made this for anyone else, um, I decided to trace out in the end. So you'll probably see from the video that um, cutting out, I did have a bit of a struggle with this fabric. It definitely took more care than a normal sweatshirt in fabric probably would. It's very, kind of drapey, it's lovely, lovely and soft. I really love this fabric, but it is really drapey when you're holding a lot of it, it's quite heavy. And I found that it kept slipping off the table and um, I found it quite hard to get my edges to meet when I was cutting on the fold. So I did have to just take a little bit more care, make sure that I had all my fabric lined up properly and everything before I started cutting, just in case anything slipped out of place. 
So I think that's everything I need to say about the pattern before I start sewing. Um, so I will get on with the sewing and let you know how I get on. So I'm all ready to start sewing up my toaster sweater this morning. Um, I have all my pieces cut out in this basket here. I don't know how everyone else keeps their, um, like their projects ready to sew. Where do you keep yours when you're just waiting to sew them? I got these baskets years ago, I think from HomeSense or TK Maxx or something like that. And I just have them on my shelves up there and I tend to just put all of my cut out projects, not that I ever have that many cut out projects ready to go. Um, but if I ever do, then I put them in these baskets and I just store them on top of my shelf until I'm ready to go. But recently I've been thinking a bit more about sewing organisation and things like that. And I'm really interested to see how you all store your works in progress and things that you're working on um, and projects that you have cut out ready to go. So do let me know in the comments below how you store your projects. So um, it looks as though from the instructions, this should be a fairly simple sew. Uh, there's not too many steps to it. Famous last words, because sometimes I think that about sweatshirt projects and things, and then they take a bit longer because I get in a mess with the overlocking and the tension and things like that. Um, knit projects are still not my favorite, I have to say. I do love wearing them, but to sew, they're definitely still not my favorite really. So I think um, going on the instructions, first of all, I just need to sew the raglan sleeves and then I need to sew down the side seams and then add all of the cuffs and the neckband and things like that. Actually, the neckband might go on before I do the side seams, I think. So um, I'll let you know how I get on. So this is my little sewing setup. You've probably seen it before if you've watched any of my other sew alongs, but I just have my sewing machine set up here on the dining table, my overlocker there on the chair next to me. And today, because I'm working on a knit project, I always tend to use my quilting foot, um, my walking foot, quilting foot, whatever you call it. <laughs> this is my one. So this is my one here. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's just a Janome quilting foot, a walking foot. And it came with my machine actually. Um, and obviously I use this for quilting when I make quilts for my work and things like that. Um, so that's why I have it really. But I do find it comes in really handy for knit projects as well, because when you're handling quite a few thicker layers of fabric. It just feeds the fabric through more evenly. So you get a more even stitch to it. It doesn't pucker so much. So whenever I'm working with knit fabrics, I tend to put this quilting foot on because I just feel like it makes life easier for top stitching and twin needling and things like that. I've also changed my needle to a ballpoint needle and I just got these ones from Hobbycraft. They're not any particular make, I don't think. Oh, hemline, <laughs> they're by a hemline. And I changed my needle to an 80 point today. So that's what I'll be using on my regular sewing machine. For once, I actually have quite a good match for my overlocker thread. So I'm just gonna re-thread my overlocker in a minute and use this kind of taupe colored, camel colored, whatever thread for my overlocker because I think that would look really nice inside. I tend to just have black, white, or this color um, for my overlocker threads. And the only reason I have this one actually is because I had something to do for work once where I just needed a ton of this color. Um, so yeah, these have just lasted me for years and years and they come out now and again if I ever have anything in this color. <laughs> but otherwise I just tend to stick to black and white. I don't know, again, what do you do about overlocker threads? Because obviously they're quite expensive. I don't want to keep buying lots of different colors. So I tend to just go with black or white. I know there are some lovely rainbow colored threads around. Um, yeah, let me know what you do in terms of overlocking thread. Are you a matcher or do you just go with the nearest shade? <laughs> so anyway, that's enough waffle. I'm gonna get my overlocker threaded up with this color now and then I'll get on with the sewing and I'll catch up with you along the way. So that's my overlocker all threaded up and ready to go now. I don't know if you saw from the video, but I did it with the um, method where you cut off the threads of your previous um, thread spools and then you knot on your new ones and then you just pull it all through. And today it did actually work. It always terrifies me doing that. I always feel like the threads are gonna snap or something's gonna break and then I'm gonna have to re-thread it from scratch. <laughs> um, but this time it did manage to go through okay. I couldn't pull the knots through the needles actually. So I did have to cut the thread there and then I just threaded the needles. 
So that's not too bad. Um, apart from that, everything went smoothly. So I'm all ready to go with my overlocker now. I'm gonna do most of this on the overlocker. I'm just going to top stitch everything on my sewing machine, I think, because fingers crossed, there isn't a neckband to fit in properly. It should just attach, similar to the one I'm wearing actually. Oh, I forgot to mention that what I'm wearing today is actually a Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt and I've just made the cropped um, sweatshirt version with the funnel neck and I really like this. It's in like a Ponte Roma fabric, so it's not too hot for this time of year where it's not too cold, but it's a bit chilly in the mornings and everything. So I think I attach the neck in the same kind of way, but I'll let you know. So that's my raglan sleeves all joined now. Um, the pattern does say that you can top stitch down the raglan seams. Um, I did debate doing that, but then I decided that I wasn't gonna do that this time with this fabric because I want it to look a bit more like knitwear, if you know what I mean. I think if I was using a sweatshirt in fabric or something, I probably would have done that top stitching. But on this occasion, and particularly because this fabric is so delicate, <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of, um, I'm being so careful when I'm handling it because it's very soft and really drapey so I don't want to handle it too much if that makes sense. Um, so I've left off the top stitching and now I'm just going to join my funnel neck piece which is this piece here that's cut on the fold so you just have like a length of fabric and it's cut on the fold and I just need to join the short seams and then I need to attach that to the um, jumper so that's what I'm going to do now. I've just sewn in my neckband. It's gonna be a bit difficult to show you because I've just um, clipped all of my side seams and it's made it really heavy. But the neck is on here. Hopefully you can see that this is inside out at the moment. Something that I hadn't really considered was the fact that I'm using such a drapey fabric and I'm not gonna get the kind of height and structure um, that's illustrated by the pattern image um, on the toaster sweater. I don't necessarily mind that because as I've said before, I don't really like things too high or tight around my neck. Like this one is quite a cow neck really, so it ha hangs down a little bit and I don't feel too kind of choked uh, by that. So hopefully I'll be okay with this one. But obviously it's something to consider if you do want that kind of high funnel neck style jumper that the pattern image gives. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. So I'm just gonna sew down the side seat now and um, along the sleeves and that'll be my sides done. I'm using my clips today because I didn't want to snag the fabric with pins. Um, I know people really love these little clips. I don't use mine very often because I find them really heavy and I find that if you're sewing something like this it really drags the fabric down. Um, so I don't really use mine very often. I know lots of people use them for jersey projects and things, but I still tend to use pins. Um, so let me know, do you use these clips or do you prefer to use pins? Um, yeah, I'm a bit strange like that. I don't really like these, but I know loads of people do rave about them, so it's probably just me. So side seams are all done, so the last thing I need to do is just to attach the cuffs and the bottom band. 
So um, that's all fairly straightforward, fingers crossed. So I won't talk too much while I'm doing that stage and I'll just film some of the sewing so that you can see what's going on. And then hopefully I'll be back to share with you my finished jumper. Just wanted to show you um, continuing on the organization theme. I bought these plastic envelopes from Amazon the other day and it's something that I've been meaning to buy for absolutely ages because I've had a lot of my PDFs and things all stored in brown envelopes and they are just such a mess. And I know a few people have done this I think I've seen on Instagram that people store their patterns this way um, so I finally brought some from Amazon and I've got my toaster sweater pattern all stored neatly in this one and it's just so much easier it's one of those things that I just don't know why I haven't done it before <laughs> um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to going through all of my patterns I think at half term I'm just going to go through all of my patterns and sort them all out and um, get the ones I use most frequently that are in a right mess um, into these envelopes and I think I'm going to just um, have a good sort out. So if you think that would be an interesting video and you'd like me to film it, let me know in the comments below. I was thinking of filming it as a video, but then I didn't know if it would just be really boring. <laughs> so let me know. Um, I quite like watching organisation videos and things like that. So um, yeah, let me know if you'd like that video. Anyway, on to the sewing now. So here's my finished toaster sweater. So yeah, I do really like it, I think. Um, but I will hold my hands up and say I've used completely the wrong fabric for this pattern. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily mind, I quite like the drapiness of it. And I've mentioned before that I'm sometimes a bit funny about high necks. Um, because this is a bit kind of more floppy, I think this neck is gonna flop forward a bit like this, um, as with my jower that I was just wearing. Um, so I don't necessarily mind that, but if you want the high neck shape, obviously you're gonna need to use something a little bit more structured than this fabric I've used today. Um, that said, I absolutely love this fabric. It feels so soft and so lovely and warm. Even though it's quite thin, it's got a really lovely brushed texture to it. So it does feel really, really cozy. So I'll just stand up and show you where the length of it falls. So hopefully you can see that it just falls just where I like it really, just kind of top of my hips, just where the pockets of my jeans come. And yeah, I really like that length. I'm really happy with the length. I didn't make any alterations to the length in the end. If you are planning to make this uh, sweater, I would definitely say just check the finished length of the sweater before you start. It does actually say to do that in the pattern um, instructions as well, because it does say that it is a crop sweater and it will come up quite short. So yeah, I definitely recommend checking that before you start in case you do want to lengthen anything. Something went a little bit awry with the cuffs of this, I think. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure um, what's happened here. So you can see that they're actually quite baggy and floppy. Um, and I don't know why that is. It might be due to my fabric choice and just that it does have that bit of extra drapiness and stretchiness. On the pattern image and the toaster sweaters that I've seen in the past, the cuffs are actually quite tight and fitted and they're actually quite long. So I did wonder if I'd actually put these on upside down <laughs> and they should have been, they kind of end up as a cone shape and um, the widest bit needs to be sewn on to the end of the sleeve and then you get kind of a tight cuff um, and mine aren't tight at all which again, I don't really mind too much. It feels really cozy and um, I don't think it looks too bad, but I'm not quite sure what happened there. And I did consider recutting the cuffs actually and just taking, um, I did consider cutting these off at the end. Can you see them <laughs> here? And then recutting the cuffs and seeing if I could make them a bit more like the pattern image, but I just didn't have enough fabric left to be able to do that. So I've left them as they are. Um, it could be that I've accidentally put them all upside down, even though when I went back to look at the pattern, I couldn't see that I'd done that. Or as I say, it might just be my fabric choice. So either way, I don't really mind too much from my first go at this pattern. Um, and particularly because, as I say, the fabric is a little bit different. 
So I think I'm definitely going to make another version of this pattern and I'm going to make it in a more structured knit fabric, maybe like a sweatshirt in fabric or a boucle or something like that. I think it would be really, really cozy for winter. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to having another go at this and seeing how another version turns out in a different fabric. I think this pattern would be a really good pattern for beginners if um, you've not worked very much with knit fabrics. It's really quite an easy one because you don't actually have a neckband to stretch it in. This one just fits in as it is really, you just sew it on um, to your neckline <laughs> um, and you don't have to do any stretching to get it to fit or anything. So it really is quite a nice, easy pattern. I did have to take my time a little bit more with this, especially with this knitted fabric, because as I mentioned while I was sewing, I was really trying not to handle it too much because I could tell that it was stretched out of shape. And with my cuffs, I did wonder if maybe that had happened and maybe that's why mine are a bit more baggy than they should be. I don't know, but this fabric, although it's lovely, it does require that bit of extra care, I'd say. So yeah, I think that's all there is to say about this make. I really like it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the sew along. I know it wasn't a particularly involved sew along, but hopefully it will be helpful. And um, if you haven't made this pattern, then maybe it will be helpful if you are thinking of trying it out for yourself as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have enjoyed this so long, then I'd love it if you gave the video a big like. Um, don't forget to click the notification bell and do leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've made the toaster sweater and let me know what might have gone wrong with my cuffs if you can see the problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to know your experience of sewing up this pattern and um, what you think of my version. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a lovely day and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.